31. All right, so researching solid by Inrupt uh, a lot more, and it has me quite intrigued. Um, I really am excited about this, and uh, even though I am a noob, I am very inexperienced at programming, I have decided that I want to go ahead and give this a try, see if I can create my own app. Um, maybe I can inspire some fledgling programmers out there to do the same and we can work together and get this thing built. So as I was uh, perusing around the solid.interrupt.com site, I went to the docs and was checking out the getting started. One of the things I think is interesting is that for the uh, highly experienced programmers, it says that you can make an app on your lunch break. So as I was looking through the steps of creating an app, of course they make it look super simple. Um, you start off, you get yourself a solid pod. You go and set up a basic HTML page. You add the jQuery add login status and UI elements, add the solid auth client, add a login button, add a log out button, add an input element for the profile's web ID, add rdflib.js, and I have no idea what that is, but I guess I will find out. Show the user's name, show the user's friends, make the friends clickable, and you are done. Apparently in just 11 easy steps, but we will find out how easy those are for someone like me. Ought to be entertaining, right? <laughs> so down here, this I found rather encouraging, it says, are you a future developer? And uh, it points out that a lot of people started creating the web without any programming background. So if they think that someone with absolutely no background can go and create an app on here, I'm going to go ahead and put that to the test. And I hope that you do as well. So we're going to start off by checking out the introduction to the solid specification. All right, as we're growing through the uh, introduction to the solid specification, we're learning a little bit more about the modular specification, uh, which apparently are 100% backwards compatible with the existing web. I find that quite interesting. Each spec taken in isolation provides extra features to an existing system. However, when used in combination, they enable new exciting possibilities for websites and applications. Down here it discusses a little bit more about how uh, it makes the web a more collaborative read-write space and that it can it's passing the control uh, from owners of a server to the users of that system and that is how it is able to help you keep your information more secure and under your control. Uh, it's definitely all about protecting privacy and it's important to control who has access to what. Down here after it talks about a little bit more about the web ID and this web ID TLS, I'm sure we'll figure out what that is later on. Uh, it says down here, discovery is the final piece and allows the ability to tie all of these things together and enables both humans and machines to participate in a rich ecosystem. Well, I think that is absolutely fascinating. So let's continue. We'll go to introduction to linked data. Now, so here we have the introduction to linked data. Uh, it says that everyone in the solid ecosystem can store any piece of they data they produce wherever they want. Uh, so while my comment on your photo is stored in my pod, your photo is stored in your pod. However, this means that we need a way for connecting the data in different pods together such that the connection between my comment and your photo can be identified. Well, of course. So, Solid connects resources in different pods by representing all data as linked data. At its core, linked data is very simple. Every piece of data gets its own HTTP URL on the web, and we use those URLs to refer to the 
to refer to those them. <laughs> so if your photo is identified by yada 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 yada, then my comment is at yada 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 yada. And that'll link back to that URL. It says the interesting thing about the links within link data is that those links are typed. Hmm. So we explicitly say how my comment and your photo are related. For example, we can say yada 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 yada. So the target of my comment is your photo. These link types don't have to be invented. Many of them already exist. And by reusing them, we ensure that the solid different clients and apps can reuse the same data. In this case, we reused a link type from the web annotation and ontology. And if you are interested in the web annotation vocabulary, there's your address. Go ahead and check all of that out. Now, I will not make you sit here and listen to me as I read through these things, so we're going to go ahead and move on just a little bit. Expressing the link data with turtle. Turtle, turtle. So, since solid represents things with linked data, it is useful if you're able to read linked data documents. Linked data is typically represented in RDF, the Resource Description Framework. RDF has different syntaxes. We will use the turtle syntax. Basically, writing turtle comes down to writing the three components of the linked data. The subject, or the source of the link. The predicate, which is the link type and the object, the target of the link. Those three together are called a triple. For instance, here are some triples about Jane Doe. Go ahead and look through how these differ. We have Jane's pod, her name, Jane Doe, given name, Jane, family name, Doe. Those are your three, one, two, three. Now if we look through here, we have Jane's Pod, and we have Bill and Barb. So those would be linked by Bill, his given name William, Barb, given name Barbara, okay. So note how we surround URLs by angular brackets, you know those little, the alligators, little crocodiles, the more than or less than symbols, and literal values by quotation marks would help if I highlighted that, right? By quotation marks. The tag at en indicates that the literal uses the uh, English language, if I could find the right word. And finally, a dot ends the triple. Okay, so we've got the angular brackets right here and right here, right here and right here. And we've got the quotation marks right there and right there. Here we have the at English sign, and finally the dot to end the triple. Let's approximate all of these triples into short sentences. So, Jane's full name is Jane Doe. Jane's first name is Jane. Jane's last name is Doe. Jane knows Bill. Jane knows Barb. Bill's first name is William. Barb's first name is Barbara. So let's take a look up here. That would be Jane's full name is Jane Doe. Jane's first name, given name, is Jane. Family name, last name, Doe. Jane knows, oops, knows Bill and knows Barb. Bill, his given name is William, and <laughs> Barb, her given name is Barbara. Okay, I got that. Writing triples this way can be long, so Turtle has a couple of abbreviations to make our reading and writing easier for people. Here is the same fragment, but shorter. The at prefix Jane, Jane's pod, let's see, uh -oh. all right. At prefix F-O-A-F, fourth. Let's see, Jane, Jane, uh, uh-huh, there's that at English, all right. F-O-A-F. Hmm. Alright, I think I get what it's talking about here. 
Long URLs can be abbreviated by declaring prefixes at the top of the file. To reuse the subject of the previous triple, write a semicolon. It's a little winky face for all of you who don't know, instead of a dot. To reuse both the subject and the predicate, separate the objects with a comma. All right, so let's go back up to that example and take a look. Here's our semicolon. So that's reusing the subject. Here's the subject. And then we have the dot, the dot, and here's our commas. Hmm, okay. All right, I don't know. I, I think it's making a little bit more sense to me. Let's move on. I hope it's making more sense to you. So, uh, manipulating the linked data. How are we going to do this? Now this page is a lot more in depth and if you're a noob like me, um, you're going to want to spend uh, quite a bit of time getting to know the information on this page and uh, checking out some of the references that they list and uh, that is uh, definitely going to take some time for me. But in the meantime, we'll do a quick overview and figure out what is the RDF LIB. So it's a general toolbox for doing most of the things for linked data. It can store data, parse, and serialize data into various formats, and keep track of changes to the data coming from the app or the server. Got it, all right. They also list this JS doc reference, and if you are unfamiliar with it, like I am, then you will want to definitely check that out some more. But in the meantime, let's go over this glossary. So what is a store? The store is the data structure to store graph data and perform queries against it. This is the simplest way to work with linked data in RDF LIB. You can store data from JavaScript, dump data out from it, or perform raw queries. We have the fetcher. The fetcher is a helper object that connects to the web, loads data, and saves it back. Uh, it's more powerful than using the simple store object. Okay, when you have a fetcher, uh, then you can also ask the query engine to go fetch new linked data automatically as your query makes its way across the web. Okay, I can understand that. Now, the update manager. An even more helper object. Well, that's good. I'm gonna need all the help I can get on this one. Anyway, the update manager allows you to send small changes to the server to patch the data as your user changes the data in real time. All right, pretty understand, easy to understand. It also allows you to subscribe to changes other people make to the same file, keeping track of upstream and downstream changes and signaling any conflict between them. So, go on to the graph. Uh, it's a database for the semantic web. This database is seemingly arbitrary in terms of what is related to what. There are no parent nodes or root nodes, and the connections between nodes is key. All right, remember that. Connections between nodes is key. We have the triples. We already discussed that earlier. Uh, the triples are an RDF concept that com are comprised of the subject, the predicate, and object. For example, storing the data, I have the name John, would be represented as a triple. Similarly, the quad is like a triple, but also has a property to explain where the data came from. Okay, and finally we have the statement is another word for a quad. So we'll have to remember anytime we see a quad or statement, those are interchangeable. From this point forward though, it goes into a lot of technical information about setting up the, the RDF LIB.js, setting up a store, using a store, scroll down here, some more and it just keeps going and going. So like I said, this is very in-depth. If you're a noob, you want to take a look and really get to know it before you move on to the next thing. Uh, we have the listing data there. Okay. So, let's go back over here and let's go to the writing solid applications. So writing solid applications with Angular. The easiest way to get started uh, developing solid with Angular is to use the solid Angular uh, Yaoman generator. If you're new to Yaoman, like I am, you're going to want to check out the quick uh, getting started guide. 
and they have a link there for you. So Yaomin is a scaffold scaffolding tool that will uh, install all the basic files, folders, and dependencies that you will need to start coding right away. Uh, the code for the solid angular generator can be found at their GitHub. There's the link right there. Get all that good stuff. I will install it and show all of that in a different video. Um, it goes into a little bit it's about the installation directions and then we have some discussion on the dependencies. Again, a lot more in depth. Um, what the sample application does. It's going to go through the code workflow. We have step one, the registration. Uh, now this right here, to get you started right away, you can register with the existing solid pod. And that is the one that we covered in one of our earlier videos. So uh, we get to see how well you can just kind of jump into that. Um, but like it said, that's just the skeleton, that's just the framework for it. So we go into step two, the login, how we can go through all of that. We're going to load the profile. We're going to save and update the profile. Um, it explains a little bit about the code structure. Some of the areas of interest, again, something that is a little more in depth then I am able to go and it gives a few quick notes about the code and gives some hidden things that you should know. Um, so we definitely want to remember to come back to this as we go through everything and refresh our memory. So finally the running the solid server. This is not something I I think I'm gonna be able to do too easily, but I could be wrong. Who knows? You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, sometimes I stumble upon some, some uh, interesting solutions, but this is gonna be very, very in depth. You scroll down, and there you go. You have a solid server. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, so I will be back very soon with some more information, some examples of how I can uh, screw it up royally, and uh, like I said, this ought to be entertaining.